Pastos Biology. Topics from the Study Guide. We're looking at levels of organization. This, of course, is the human organism. This is the largest level. When you take microbiology, you'll study microorganisms. Organisms are divided into organ systems. In the human, for example, the respiratory system, the digestive system, uh, the nervous system, uh, the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system, and so forth. These are familiar to you. Organ systems, in turn, are divided into organs. The lungs, part of the respiratory system, the heart, part of the cardiovascular system, the liver, the stomach, the large intestine, the small intestine, part of the digestive system. Organs, in turn, are divided into tissues. And we'll look at tissues in just a moment. Other organs of the body can be seen if we remove some of these organs. For example, let's remove the lungs. When we do that, we get a, look, a better look at the heart, part of the cardiovascular system, major blood vessels. If we remove the heart, let's take a little bit closer look to the organs in the upper thorax. The esophagus extends down to the stomach. The trachea in the upper thorax divides into two branches, the uh, bronchi, the primary bronchi. You'll learn more about these in A&P too. Major blood vessels, superior vena cava, the aorta that curves around and passes down through the thorax and into the abdomen. A lot of these white threads that you see are part of the nervous system. Nerves are found everywhere in the body. Next semester. Let's remove the liver. When we do that, we get a better view of the stomach. Removing the stomach gives us a view of the pancreas. Finally, removing the, pan the large intestine uh, gives us a look at some of the internal organs of the body. Let's look a little closer at some of the organs in the upper part of the abdomen. Here's the pancreas again. This is the spleen, considered part of the cardiovascular system. You can't see the kidneys very well. They're hidden somewhat behind the pancreas and the other organs. The tubes draining the kidneys are the ureters, and they drain urine into the urinary bladder, which is not too easily visible in this view. We mentioned that organs are subdivided into tissues. Let's take a look at some tissues. Now, this is the stomach. One of the most important tissues is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue covers surfaces, the outside of the stomach, the inside of the stomach, the linings of the body cavities, the outside of the heart, the inside of the heart, the skin. Any body surface is covered by epithelial tissue. Another type of tissue is connective tissue. You're built with connective tissue. That's what you're put together with. If we look inside the wall of the stomach, although you can't see it from this view, a lot of connective tissue is present. Still another class of tissue is muscle tissue. Now when we say muscle or muscle tissue, don't be confused. That's not the same as muscles. Muscles refer to one type of muscle tissue, the skeletal muscle. You'll study skeletal muscle in a separate unit, but you can see some of the skeletal muscle, internal skeletal muscle. In Here's a view of some of the other skeletal muscles of the body. You can see the deltoid muscle over the shoulder, part of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, muscles of the thoracic and abdominal wall. These are all skeletal muscles, what we call muscles. We mentioned organs come in two types, solid, non-muscular, like the liver, hollow, muscular, like the stomach. 
Now what makes these muscular organs is smooth muscle within their wall. Smooth muscle is a second type of muscle tissue. Critically important, all of the internal organs, particularly the hollow organs, contain smooth muscle within their walls. You'll hear a lot about the function of smooth muscle, particularly in A and P2. The third type of muscle is cardiac muscle, the heart, a wondrous muscle which we spend quite a bit of time on in A and P2.